Hey, you're listening to Recess. Today on the show, we have Joshua Lau with us. He's the first ever Malaysian to win the grand prize in the Stainway Southeast Asia Pacific Regional Finals and is set to compete in Germany in 2022. I'm Zulin, let's get right into it. Hi Joshua, welcome to the show today. Hi. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Mm, yeah, kind of. A little bit, of course. <laughs> All right, don't worry. We'll get this right into So it'll be quite easy. Uh, first question then. How long have you been playing the piano? Mm, so I started when I was six years old and uh, I've been playing since then. Um, I didn't really take it very seriously um, until maybe like 12 or 13, then slightly more serious. Yeah. And then I guess last year I kind of decided that I I do it as a career in the future. Yeah, so all quite quite recent. Okay, that's very cool though. You're like 17 now, so that's been about a decade. But let's go back right to the beginning. What made you want to pick up the piano in the first place? Mm, well, we had a piano at home. Um, and I guess I just kind of poked around, uh, poked it around sometimes. And uh, that was, my mom used to play piano as well. So I guess I I read a few of the the scores there and I would play through them sometimes. Well, some of them are classical and then um, there's also some that are not so classical. There, mm-hmm. There's, uh, I remember like Richard Kederman, I think, and, and a few other. Um, and so I guess I just played, my mom asked me if I want to learn then. Apparently I said yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I continue from there. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I started playing piano I don't really remember much but I just just played it as far as I can remember um, it's just something that's always been there yeah mm-hmm. so I'm taking it that it's not just a job kind of thing uh, how does it make you feel like do you really enjoy playing it is that why you've been doing it for so long mm. um yeah I, I do enjoy it of course um it's not really a, a I don't see it as a job but um I think well, last time I thought of it as a, as a hobby more of, and then now it's just, maybe this is kind of what I want to do. Well, for me, it's, it's something that I, I really enjoyed doing, especially when I started to do more of it when I was uh, like older. Um, and I, w- I would read up about it a lot. Um, and nowadays I still do. In fact, I spend a lot of time in the, the school library because the, the school library is uh, mainly uh, related to art so there's a lot of books about all that which which is very interesting for me and uh well mainly in in the area which i'm interested in which is classical music there's a lot of uh well it's kind of like history right but but in the, the music version uh not to say i don't like playing piano but it's more of i like music itself rather than gender just the piano so um that's that's i guess an indicator um well, I want to do it, but not, not just that, but because I think that uh, I want to learn more about it. And definitely this is something that I feel like I can do uh, almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like you have a lot of um, background work going on, you know, a lot of practicing, a lot of studying, very methodical. And it's not just the free, fun music that everyone sees. So do you think that all this training and all the time that you devote to practicing and studying, do you think that takes the joy out of the music? Do you feel like that? Mm, well i've definitely seen it other people there's a lot of people who practice a lot um for me um especially with uh something that i remember my teacher told me quite a while back um it really depends on the person themselves how much they practice there's not really a like a definite time there are people who i, I see practice like six to eight hours a day that's just kind of crazy but i more recently i think i kind of want to uh live a life you know um i think that I, I think that music is not just if you practice then you can play really well i think uh, well if you think back to the to composers even today songwriters and all that um they write about their life experiences so if you if you just sit in a practice room that's not going to really you know um you're not going to know what to to express i guess um and uh well personally i i don't practice much uh, not enough, I think, but but then also talking about like uh, I was reading an interview um, online of uh, one of my my favorite pianists. He's he won the the Chopin competition a while back, um, um, and he he did say basically throughout his whole uh, like um, childhood 
And up to university time, he practiced basically one hour a day, nothing more than that, almost nothing more than that, which to many people might seem like, hey, that's very little. But I think, yeah, uh, I don't really see it as a job because I, I do enjoy playing, you know. So does it feel like it takes away the fun? Well, if you're doing it thinking that it is kind of like work, then yeah, but if not, and you enjoy it, then, you know, you can also kind of force yourself to make, enjoy it. But if you don't, then why, why bother, right? That, and also when you practice and all that, it's, it's not just about sitting at the piano and actually practicing. That's a lot more, right? Um, uh, in fact, my teacher started me on, on reading as well. So that, that's kind of how I, I started. He would lend me books every time. So I played Beethoven for him. Then he gave me a book on uh, Schnabel, which is, the first one to record all his piano sonatas. Um, I forget when, but many years ago. Um, and, and it's very interesting. So you learn more about it. Then without this information, it's not that you can't play, but I think it, it's much more interesting. Um, yeah, as for, as for schoolwork, um, well, since I do study well in an art school, there's a lot of art-related, music-related work. Um, so you have stuff that... I guess sometimes, yeah, I don't really want to do it, but then you have to, <laughs> right? In terms of getting a, uh, it, that, that sort of, um, if it's sort of similar, right? Yeah, I have to practice for, let's say, a concert or something, or nowadays it's recordings right, uh, online. Um, but if, if, let's say, it's, it's schoolwork, like academic schoolwork, then uh, well, you just have to find time. Sometimes, well, with the, the schedule, it's not to say it's busy, but that's just... Um, because of the schedule, how it's laid out, you might have lessons until like six, but then you have like 15 minutes slots in between and you get home, it's eight o'clock already. Some days I don't practice, but I think it's okay. As long as you set aside time and you, you focus when you do, then you can get, you can get it done. I love how you have a very practical approach to it. You're like, um, music is an expression of life. But if I don't have a life outside of music, then what am I expressing, right? <laughs> I love I love that. So what do you have outside music then? <laughs> mm, not much, well, because currently there's, there's a lot of studies. But I mean, yeah. um, well, I guess uh, since I just came here, I've been exploring a little bit um, of of Singapore. I haven't been back for 10 years, so it's, it's been a very long time. Um, that and, uh, well, I started to read more, less, less of a music related book, sort of <laughs> very uh, textbook, very academic writing, more of fiction and all that, or, or watch, um, watch films and all that as well. Um, yeah, I think you, you learn much more about that rather than just thinking about the music in terms of just just music yeah it's really nice that you have like a more global perspective looking at different um pers uh, different ways to look at life you know through movies and books as well so speaking of a global perspective you are the first malaysian to win the Stainway southeast asia pacific regional finals how does it feel mm, kind of exciting i guess but then at the same time i think is it also depends on who the other contestants were because if let's say I joined a previous round I might not have won and then um, they might not have won the the uh, first prize or something it doesn't really matter as well I think uh, maybe the other people who uh, didn't join this round from other countries and then you know it, it uh, they didn't win the first uh, if uh, and if they did join they might have but I think the country wise doesn't really matter I think it's it's just really fun to see other people play. And you can see that pianists come from all over the world. You know, musicians come from all over the world. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of exciting. It's a cool title to have, but I, I don't really think that it's any more valuable than if you were the second or the third. In the end, I think it's individual players, how well they do. Um, also, placings don't really matter, I think. Um, that's what everyone says, but then, of course, secretly, they all want to win. But I, I think after, after you, you win one, then you realize, actually, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change much. And yeah. sometimes, um, hearing from my teachers who also have judge competitions, some organizers might force them to give out prizes, even though they don't deem anyone worthy of them. So, um, again, you can't really judge these, right? Like, how do you say something is, is, is objectively good? You can't, right? There's, there's always certain performances that people like, some don't really like them. So it really depends, I think. 
it's it's hard to put like a, a value on it. So it, it depends on individual what uh, individually what they like. Yeah. I like how you say that. Oh, um, once you've won one, it's not that much because your CV is certainly very long. You've obtained your um, license from the Trinity College London with a distinction at age 15. So for the listeners, this is equivalent to a master's level qualification. And now at age 17, you are preparing to compete in Germany while you are doing your IB as well. How do you balance this? How did you balance it when you were 15 and how do you balance it now? Mm. Well, when I was 15, I guess there was less schoolwork and also, well, I, I did IGCSC when I was 16. So well, that was during the, the IGCSE years, but I didn't really study. And anyways, the exams were cancelled. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't really, I, I, I mean, when, when it, it did come to the, the exam time, uh, I mean, the, the LTCL, the, that's the short form for the, the exam name. Um, and uh, I just focused more on it and then resume back to school work after that. But I guess similar to what I said previously, uh, or currently also, um, and also the, the Germany one is not a, a competition. It's just a festival, like a performance. But I, of course, that means I, I still have to perform for it, but <laughs> I prepare for it. But um, I guess it's the same thing. You just have to set aside time, see what's more important at the time. Um, for example, if you have exams coming up, then, well, firstly, shouldn't have anything scheduled around then. But if you do, then you just have to balance it out, figure out what is more important at the moment. Yeah. Otherwise, um, no, there's no re- really trick. Um, you have to sacrifice something. Yeah, and I, I don't want to sacrifice sleep, so I will I will sacrifice something else. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I have sacrificed social life, but you know, that's beside the point. So you mentioned that in Germany it will be a performance, not a competition. So that's the International Steinway Festival in Hamburg, Germany. What are you most excited about this? Mm, well, it's probably going to be different considering the current situation but uh what i did look forward to is is well going to germany of course um and, and also performing uh, meeting other pianists who play really well so and uh i guess if i have the chance i don't know how it, it's laid out but if i do have the chance to explore the place um germany is uh it's also the home of uh some of the great composers of the past as well, like beethoven yeah and uh so I guess there are also places that I want to visit and um, I guess museums, uh, exhibitions, maybe watch concerts as well. Um, yeah, so depends, but I guess kind of excited to go there and just listen to music, play and and, and to see other things as well and eat food as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the famous German sausages, you have to get the food uh, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you will be going to Germany in 2022, but let's talk 10 years from now. What do you see yourself doing in 10 years? What's the big dream, the big goal? Mm, well, I don't know where exactly I'd end up. Um, and uh, I don't think I have really something that I, I definitely um, want to do. I guess I'll just see where it goes. but. I uh, the in sort of the best case scenario would be probably to to just perform around the world yeah um even though I don't know how much I like traveling around because um, from listening to to interviews and all that um some some pianists and uh, other like musicians concert musicians some like traveling a lot some don't it depends but uh, I think it's fun to to go around um, travel around the world and uh, not just just to perform but also um, to go sightseeing I guess and uh, again go to museums exhibitions and other things uh, go to the landmarks there I guess and eat the food of course um, quite similar things but I, I think that that's sort of interesting uh, rather than just staying in one country for the rest of your life it's kind of boring <laughs> sounds yeah. cool though like you get paid to go on holiday almost <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Joshua. Congratulations on your big win. We are all very proud of what you've done for Malaysia. All the best in Germany. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This has been an episode of Recess. Catch us next week for our next special guest. Bye, everyone. Take care.